Morning guys and welcome to Pure Property Investment One on One. Today we're joined by Anthony Pears. Anthony is a partner at Integra Financial Services. Um, what we wanted to talk about today was uh, again following on th from the theme of self-managed super fund investing and, and property investing at the moment as well is probably looking at the the nature of where our credit policies lie and the different restrictions that are coming into place with APRA putting a little bit more pressure on the banks, certain lending types being restricted and probably the nature generally of lending right now is in a really a strong state of flux and I think not having someone who really understands that detail um, on a week to week, month to month basis, you're probably going to come unstuck if you've got your plans that were laid out a couple of years ago, they're probably going to be changed slightly when it comes down to borrowing. So Anthony, if you don't mind sharing with our viewers probably a little bit more about uh, borrowing in self-managed super funds and some of the changes in that, that, that environment at the moment. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Paul. Um, whilst I don't actually do any of the mortgage or finance broking myself, we do have at, at Integra an in-house finance specialist, Jason Platt from Finance Connect. Um, I've been speaking with Jason recently about this um, and for another client that we're actually in the process of purchasing a property, um, Jason has found that the banks are tightening up very, very quickly and very hard. Mm. Um, he had uh, the deal that was done, um, went to present it to the client, the interest rate had moved 1% and that was only two weeks ago. Mm. So it went from 5.8 up to 6.8% straight away. So the banks are actually pushing very hard um, on the rates they're also pushing very hard on, on, the, on the restrictions. So they've actually really reduced the LVRs as well. Um, and also they're requiring a greater in, uh, cash pool to be held yep. there as well for protection. Gotcha. So the, the banks are, uh, I think on, on one sense, trying to take the heat out of the market mm. as yeah. well. Um, and I know with some of those institutions, they just don't want to do any financing for the self-managed super funds at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, for, for a few reasons, as you said, I think it's, it's quite difficult, it's quite laborious, time-consuming mm. and labour-intensive. Um, and exactly like I said, I think the, going back to the reason of self-managed super fund property purchase is really to make sure that it is quite a safe investment um, and the government doesn't want, and, and the banking sector doesn't want people to be speculating in that space. And therefore, obviously, like you said, we're seeing LVR is reducing, we're seeing more cash to be kept in reserve and we're seeing probably a, a higher restriction and a higher interest rate so the banks want to make sure they're protected by the sounds of it. Um, probably to touch on that as well, if I were to say a general self-managed super fund, uh, let's say that the, the fund itself had approximately a quarter of a million dollars cash in it, Ideally, in this market right now, what would you say that that would look like from uh, how much they could potentially borrow in the grand scheme of things and what kind of cash reserve they would therefore have to keep aside if you're sitting on a portfolio or a self-managed super fund of approximately a quarter million right now? Sure. Uh, that's actually a great question because yeah. we're actually just uh, doing that for a client at the moment. Okay. His fund balance is a little bit less. It's about around the 230 mark, sure. but it's going to be around the same sort of numbers. Yep. So the bank is actually requiring a cash pool of at least $50,000 okay. there. Um, so 20 odd percent. Yeah. Take, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and with uh, this client, um, the numbers have come out that he can look to it for a property for the purchase of a price of about 420. Okay. 420 to about 440. And that would be an LVR of about 70% on that property. So I, I guess, yeah, there's a couple of things there is that you've got a cash deposit kept aside. You've got to make sure that just because you've got a quarter of a million in that scenario, say 230,000, you can't borrow up to 70% of 230,000 because there's, again, a portion that has to be kept aside. So yes. making sure you're realistic in what you can achieve from that fund and that, that pool of money is, is important because Again, I think a lot of us in the personal space say, well, I've got a 20% deposit, I can leverage up to 80%. Well, if you've got a 20% deposit, you can't leverage up to 80%, you're probably gonna to have to keep, again, another 20% of that, of that aside in a cash pool and then potentially only leverage the rest up to 70%. And then you're going to be stung at a higher percentage from a, an interest rate perspective as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can probably note out here from all that information that there is a lot that goes into making sure the strategy and the objective and the structures are correct. Um, and I think sitting down with someone like Anthony and his team um, to make sure all those aspects and those ducks are put in a row before you go and buy that property is imperative. Uh, you can contact him at the bottom of the screen, details are there. You can also talk to us in regards to property type specifics when it comes down to buying that property in that self-managed super fund. But um, again, guys, if you uh, have any further questions, feel free to contact us. We can put you in touch with anyone you need to be put in touch with uh, and we'll no doubt chat with you very soon. Cheers.